hi guys welcome to today's video i hope you're doing well and i am so sorry that the video is a little bit late so um today we are talking about a palette that i curated last year and it's inspired by the old masters <music> So I'm really excited uh, about this video and um, yeah, what we're going to do first is go through the palette and swatch all the colors, talk about where you can find them. So a lot of these colors are um, artisan made, so they're specialty colors and they have um, really beautiful, unique pigments, not necessarily ones that you'll find um, in any art store. So some of them are, some of them are brands like Daniel Smith and Schmincke and then some of them I will talk about the shops that I got them from and um, a couple of shops may uh, um, have been closed down or not have those pigments available so I'll tell you where you can get alternatives and I will link all of that in the description below. Okay, so we are going to swatch them on watercolor paper and I'm just showing you the palette here. This is my first uh, swatch, so swatch card for this palette. I have changed some things around since then and um, yeah, we'll go through everything. I also have this beautiful little swatch card from KW Arts on Etsy. Her colors are amazing. There are some of them in the palette and I really recommend them. Um, yeah, just really stunning colors. So. This palette is, I think it's kind of based off the Whiskey Painters palette, which I highly recommend. They are very expensive, but they're well worth the money. Um, this one I just got off Amazon. This was like a $20 made-in one. So it, it goes in and out of stock. So I'll link it below. It may not be available at the minute, but hopefully it'll come into stock at some point. Um, and... Also, it does usually have the larger uh, brush well in the middle and I just um, take the little kind of dividers and put them in, so they sort of go on the, along the sides and I put them in the middle uh, with the half pans and that seems to work really well. So I'll try and remember to link um, or to put a little clip in of that at the end. But um, So we're using the uh, White Ibis Holbein sketchbook. Uh, my favorite uh, Raphael Fresco brush and I'll try and remember to link everything below and then before I begin any painting session I always like to use my brush to wet the colors um, for two reasons one so that the palette doesn't go rusty and two uh, just because it's kind of beginning that kind of connection with your paints with the paintbrush and just that movement and the flow and kind of turning off your other brain and all these things that you need to do and um, you know everything that you've been thinking about in the day and then just kind of reconnecting with your colors with your paints and what you have available and um, it sort of already starts your brain looking at those color combinations and starts thinking about uh, what you want to paint. So.
So you can see that I'm using my favorite Winsor Newton Gold ink and then the uh, dip pen, the handle is from Jackson's and the nibs are the gold A&M nibs. I get them from Jet Pens but if you do want Jackson's to carry them then please let them know that as well. I have put in a product submission but I think it would help if you guys let them know. Okay so let's get into the colors. So the first color there that we swatched was the uh, Daniel Smith Black Tourmaline and I really love this one. It is um, kind of a softer black and it has a lot of granulation so you'll see in some of the mixes it makes really beautiful uh, granulating mixes and and I use it to create like uh, granulating indigos and things like that so the next one that we swatched actually let me grab my book okay the next one was the Schmincke sepia reddish reddish I think which is a beautiful um, dark brown color this next one, the one we're swatching now, is one of my mixes. So I called this one Rembrandt's Easel, but it, this is a beautiful dark, deep, uh, rich brown with the Shimmer Iron Glimmer mixed in. So you can actually use the Schmincke Sepia Reddish and the Shimmer Iron Glimmer, which we'll swatch soon, and you can make that a similar mix to that. So this one here is a specialty color. This is from Jackson's, but it's probably my most expensive watercolor. This is the Lutea brand and um, hand milled. Just she makes a few beautiful colors, plant-based ones. And this one is the strawberry gray. So really stunning colors. The next one here that we're gonna do is the Wallace and Seymour brand. So again, I believe these, I'm not sure if they're still hand milled, but uh, they started hand milled and they're just a very, very beautiful range of artisan colors. So um, I have a few videos about them. I, I really loved them for a long time and um, the texture that they have in their paints as well. So that was Citadella Gracious. And then this one here is another one of their paints. This is the Shimmer Iron Glimmer. So um, this is the one that, that you can mix with like the dark brown to get the really beautiful um, like uh, rich kind of sparkle there and it's a natural sparkle as well. Um, but you can also use this, you know, with it, mix it with anything and that's just a really beautiful uh, color. So yeah, I'm just showing you, you can kind of mix those to get that one. So the next one here is the, um, this is by KW Arts on Etsy and I love her colors. This one is the Cassell Earth and this one makes a really, really, like it's got really stunning granulation the way that it um, finishes and you'll see in the painting it almost makes parts of the painting look really, really old and crackled, like a crackle finish. It's really beautiful. Um, this one is one of my favorites. This is the Wallace and Seymour Blue John. So just a really stunning, moody, complicated color. I really love it. So this one is another Wallace and Seymour one. This is their Indanthron or Indanthrine. Um, and I really like mixing this one with the uh, black tourmaline to get a indigo. This one here is a little bit, um, so I actually was possibly looking for, I might try their Beera Blue, uh, looking for like a darker um, blue here. This one's very staining and I don't usually have staining um, colors on my palette so I'm not sure. We'll see if that one gets changed out but um, this one here is the Schmincke Neutral Tint which is just a really beautiful again one of those kind of mysterious moody um, neutrals. This one here is the Daniel Smith Lapis Lazuli. Lapis Lazuli and it is a again a really stunning blue and really beautifully granulating as well i really love the subtlety of this color okay 
Okay, this one is another Wallace and Seymour one. This is actually a brighter one for this palette. So this one is the, their Ultramarine Violet. So uh, I was thinking, you know, with this palette, I could have gone a couple of ways. And you'll see like in the first swatch card, I didn't have any of these brighter purples. Um, but I thought it was important and I did think, and this is not supposed to be a historically accurate palette, but I did think that, um, you know, they do, they did like the rich purples. So I did want to put um, that in there. And But I wanted to keep this um, kind of handmade and um, just that different quality of uh, paints. So I didn't want to put just a regular one in and it's a really beautiful ultramarine violet. Okay, sorry, I'm a little behind here. So the one we just did with all the textured uh, like powder blue there, that's kyanite and that was one of my colors. Um, I'm having a hard time sourcing that, but if I can get more, I will make more of that one. This one here is the uh, copper from KW Arts, a really beautiful uh, pale powdery blue. And then this one here is the Daniel Smith Interference Blue. So I really love mixing this with any of the dark browns and just getting a really, really gorgeous um, kind of sheen and yeah, just a quality to it. So um, what was I going to say? The copper. There's also another uh, brand, A Gallo Paints, and they have a copper that looks similar as well on Jackson's. And they also have beautiful paints. So again, like I said, any... Um, other uh, you know places that I think you can get some of these I will also link below so I haven't tried every brand yet but you know uh, there are a lot of beautiful ones out there so if you see something similar that's near you you know available near you definitely try those out so um, this one here is from uh, another shop KJ designs by Karen I believe on Etsy and she has the most beautiful uh, soft creamy shimmery paints so uh, this one is chocolate and I just thought it was perfect for this palette and again you know the old masters were not walking around painting with shimmery thing you know colors but this is my this palette's my representation kind of of how they make you feel that richness the depth the um, beautiful kind of poignant I don't know quality of them so I, I I really wanted this palette to be more how they make me feel rather than you know historically representative so um, this one here let me see so this one here is the Wallace and Seymour Theo Indigo and you can you'll see as well some of these colors go on really rich and vibrant but that one actually deepens into like a more of a plum like a deep plum uh, when it dries and this one here is the this is an Isero color again I recommend her color range they're really beautiful and um, this one is the Isero pink so it's probably the most vibrant kind of quinacridone pink that you can get um, so I, I wanted to put that in there and you can see that um, when it softens out with water you can also get a really soft beautiful um, like a, a, a very powdery pink as well so I really like it for that um, this one here is a KW Arts one this is purple ochre and I absolutely love all of her violet earth colors so she's got um, you'll see in a minute that I think the next one we do is Cote d'Azur violet um, and I know she's got another couple in her shop as well which look amazing yeah, so this is the Cote d'Azur Violet, which again is a beautiful Violet Earth. And um, it's kind of like the Porphyry Violet from, um, from Colors of the Iron Range, which I think her shop has uh, closed down. And um, yeah, but it's, it's a really beautiful um, one. And then this one here is the Wallace and Seymour Rubies. So you can see that they're all kind of in that family. And again, this one has a lot of that real lovely texture that I that I want. Um, I think I was going to say something about the coat saw, but I can't remember. 
Yeah, so some of these ones, like the porphyry violet ochre, is like um, kind of in that family. And um, I, a couple of those kind of colors that I know I can't get anymore, I am kind of saving them for, you know, paintings that I want to do in the future as well. So um, this one here is uh, a beautiful one by Nibs Watercolors. If you have been around the channel, you know I love her shop. It was, I think, the first shop that I found sparkle colors at, and I really, really uh, love her, the quality of her paints, and um, that one was Madrid. It's kind of similar to my favorite mix of uh, Potter's Pink and Pearl White, but it's just got a little bit more texture. It's really beautiful. Uh, this one here is the pink color by KW Arts. And I know that uh, Crema Pigments also has a beautiful pink color as well. So actually I have that in a, a, a smaller plein air palette that's kind of like this one. And then uh, this one is, let's see, this is a th this is Through Light. And I think I got this one from Colors of the Iron Range. And she, uh, it, her shop's not open at the minute. Um, but you can get this one. I actually found another uh, shop lbda ldba I'll, I'll link it below but they do um stock it as well wallace and seymour has it so there are a few places that you can get that one Okay, so the one we're swatching now is the Daniel Smith French Ochre, my favorite ochre because it's so sheer and beautiful. The one we did before that was the Wallace and Seymour Chinabresso, which is again one of my favorites, but very hard to get. Um, this one here is the Schmincke Silver. So this is similar to the uh, Daniel Smith Pearlescent White. I think it's just maybe a touch um, less white, which I really liked and I wanted for this palette. It's a really beautiful one. Uh, this one here is the, uh, so I think this may have been a Colors of the Iron Range. or a, No, this one is a Rivervale, Rivervale watercolors. So she was the first one I actually got handmade water, watercolors off and all kind of earth colors. And this one is the pink pipestone. So absolutely stunning. You can see the granulation in it there and the actual granules. And then in this little half pan, I actually squeezed in two different uh, burnt sienna type colors. So they're both Daniel Smith. This one is roasted French ochre. And this is the cooler version, a little bit darker. And then the next one is, uh, so you can see, it's just got a really beautiful color, beautiful granulation. Uh, this one here is the Daniel Smith Sedona. So this one is a little bit uh, warmer. It's a little bit, uh, I suppose this is probably my orange in the palette. And yeah, just a really beautiful one. So I have a whole video on my favorite neutrals and why I like them and how I use them. So yeah. <music> Okay, this one is again a Wallace and Seymour purple. This is um, cobalt violet and just a beautiful iteration of this color as well. Um, yeah, and again, I wanted a couple of brighter um, colors in here as well. So this one here is a Turner, Turner Artists watercolor and this is called gray gold. So it's like a black pigment mixed with a gold pigment and 
I just really like it. It kind of reminds me of the gold frames that they had their artworks in and I just like seeing it in the palette when I open it. So um, you can see here like this is the Schmincke Aqua Bronze and you can also mix something like this with a black that you have as well. Um, yeah, this one here is by Earth Mineral Arts. So um, I love her colors and um, there is another one in this palette but there are quite a few in my like favorites lists and things like that. This one here is I think it's called the Antique Silver. So it is hard to re wet. You have to like keep putting water on, putting water on, and putting water on. Um, maybe for like 15 or 20 minutes. Like I just keep um, adding water and then letting it sit there and then adding water. Um, but you can see it's just got this beautiful natural mica as well. So it's a lovely one for like a natural um, texture. And then this one, and like a subdued sparkle. Um, this one here is also from Colors of the Iron Range. So this is um, a similar one to a Daniel Smith Greenish Raw Umber. Uh, it's like a beautiful olive earth color. And then this one here is a Wallace and Seymour one. This is Green Earth Light. So uh, just a really a lovely soft... Uh, kind of green gold but more natural uh, it's a little bit hard to re-wet as well but um, I don't mind colors like that as long as I uh, you know if that's kind of the the hue that I want then I am happy to work for that and then this one here is the so I got this one from Rivervale watercolors on Etsy and it was the Verdigris and I also got this um, Malachite so these were a couple of the ones in my first haul from her and I'm not sure if she still stocks these um, this is the Malachite but I know that you can get the Malachite from um, another shop Stone Ground Paints so I have wanted to try her paints for a while as well and I will link the shop because they look gorgeous as well so um, like I said, if you can't find these or they um, they can't ship to your country, I'm sure there are alternatives that you can find as well. So this one here is another Earth Mineral Arts one. This is Lichen and Sage. Lichen and Sage. It's a beautiful, um, a beautiful one. And I compared this one in the last video, um, Davies Grey. So the yeah it's just a lovely um color so the Windsor and Newton Davies gray is a similar one as well if that's harder to get so yeah here's a little bit of a look at their sparkle and um So if you have been following me for a while, you may already have quite a few of these colors that you could put together a palette like this. Um, and you can see here, like I'm just going to show you a few different ways. You can use little, just like a little tin and put together a few colors that you might think um, would make a nice palette. You can use something like this. This is a silver butter tray. So um, I just got this one off Etsy. And you may have an idea of a different palette that you want to put together that might be maybe different from your usual um, studio palette or something like that. And you can, you know, either use or also sometimes like colors that you get that maybe don't um, work in a different palette may work for something like this. And it doesn't have to be like this kind of an old master's palette. It might be just a different like a floral palette or something else that you're thinking of, you know, trying to collate and... A curate um, for you know your subject matter so this one here is the first kind of neutrals palette that I had you can see again a lot of sparkle a few bright colors 
Um, and then I created this one. Uh, this is kind of, was kind of like my first Old Masters palette. It had very muted, earthy colours. Again, a couple of sparkle colours. Uh, here was a little palette I was thinking about. They're actually all schminker. It says sommelier but there, but they're actually all schminker ones. And then um, I started collecting and swatching colours for this Old Masters palette. And this is also my smaller plein air palette, which has a similar... Um, inspiration uh, so this is the um, smaller you know plain air one and so I did swatch this one in a recent I think haul video this one here on the left is um, Roman Schmoll so I have a, a paint a, 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 um, a video about that and that's a really affordable way to create a kind of this kind of a um, old world inspired palette um, and so I have the swatches and everything in that video um, are again really beautiful colors um, and then you can see here so this is just my little book that I have for swatches and for mixes and um, this is not watercolor paper um, this is the Apica notebook and I have showed this in other videos but um, I really enjoy this because there are so many pages and I can go through and just keep little notes, make little um, mixes and things like that. Uh, this one here, so I'm just showing you four different products which I actually uh, feel like uh, sort of, what's the word, combine with this palette. So th that one there is the Schmincke charcoal, charcoal in the Cherry Pit. That, that one, um, and then we had the, so we'll just start with this one. So this is the Schmincke Charcoal. So it's like a watercolor basically, and uh, but it's got the beautiful uh, granules and granulation there as well. So this one here is the Derwent XL. So it's a little block, and I think this is the Burnt Umber and 04 and it's just a really beautiful I think this is the graphite tint one so again you can see just a really beautiful color and kind of give you that feeling as well so this here is the uh, Kaweco, Kaweco SketchUp and it's got the 5.6 millimeter dark brown lead from Kohenor in it so again I really love that and then this one is the Carandash Technalo pencil so they have three different colors but um, I think that's the kind of sepia one and then this one is so I'm just showing you so you can see like some of the different things that you can use these um, for and you know practice different things and also don't underestimate just a lead pencil so this one is um, I kind of show more about this in there's a whole video how to draw 3d objects and um, I show you in that video the graphite color pencil that I really have been enjoying <music> Okay, so we're going to do a little study now to kind of use these colors and I'll kind of show you different ways that I'm thinking of using them. So I have sketched out this painting. So this is a Rembrandt painting. So this is, I think, the angel le leaving Tobias and his family. So it's a really beautiful one and you can see it like their hands. I really love the way all their different hands are. Uh, but I just, I wanted to look at the textures and the colors and things so we're using a little bit different of a palette so this is kind of a similar thing to what we did in the Davies gray one using Grisai. Um and we're using a bit of a different palette so we're using the Schmincke uh, Sepia reddish the greenish umber and then the 
the Sedona, the French ochre, and then you can see there that I'm using the Indanthrin and the black to make a like a granulating indigo. Um, we also add in, so I don't put it here, but we also added in the Isaro Rose and the Cassell Earth as well. So we have a fairly limited palette um, for this painting and I am going through to begin with and creating a, a little bit of an underpainting similar to what we did in the Davies Grey one but I wanted to um, see the different kind of the difference that the like a richer warmer color would have underneath I really um, and so you you can actually see the difference and that's what I wasn't sure of so very interesting to do this kind of a study and um, just find different elements and things that you like so this one here so you can see like I'm just kind of going through and I'm either outlining different things I am uh, using this to kind of put in the shadows so one of the things that about watercolor that's different to any other medium is that generally when you're creating a painting you're starting with the darker the darker tones and you're blocking in the dark spaces and then you build up lighter values lighter values and then you end with the lightest uh, you know values possible and you finish with that but in watercolor we have to start with the lightest um, values and we have to preserve those so we're thinking about it backwards and so that's one of the reasons why it's a little bit trickier I think sometimes so you can see that like in this painting I'm thinking where the highlights are and then I'm preserving those and then I'm going in and putting in my mid-tones and my darker um, shadow areas uh, you know the, sh the the darkest things end up being the last parts of the painting to go on so um, yeah so I hope that makes sense um, so we've kind of we've left the highlights we have put on these uh, mid-tone values and then I just kind of keep building that up with some of the darker um, areas and you can see here like this is the similar thing we did with the, the Davies Grey but you can see it's this beautiful soft kind of sage color and I actually really love the color that it gave to this painting it's very soft and just a really beautiful um, yeah, color combination which this one um, I also like but it's it has like a warmer um, whole different uh, tones to it so it's just interesting to know that you can actually change the whole um, like the just the whole feeling of that painting based on some of these uh, different techniques okay so once I have those kind of mid-tone values in I am going back to my French ochre so I'm trying to make a bridge now between the highlights the brightest uh, parts of the painting and these kind of mid-tones so I'm using French ochre and I'm also mixing some of that with the Sedona and I'm putting in kind of those intermediate uh, tones between those two so we're still not working on the darkest deepest values yet um, but we're just kind of trying to bridge the gap between the the lightest and the mid and the, the middle <music>
So you can see what we did there was um, we used the French ochre mixed with a bit of the Cassell earth mixed with a lot of water to create a soft um, color to go into the clouds. Then I began mixing the Isero pink with the Sedona to get uh, some of those blossoms a little bit brighter. And then I have started introducing the green umber and also in a very, very pale wash in some areas and then in a little bit darker of a uh, wash um, to start creating some of those uh, deeper shadow areas. And so now I'm using the sepia reddish and just blocking in some of these dark shadowy areas. So um, one of the one of the things I forgot to mention is that you know obviously I'm working in a different medium so and also working a lot smaller um, than his painting. Like I'll show you at the end the the faces are so tiny so I wasn't able to get a lot of detail in them. But this wasn't really about, um, and also like because of the size format, um, the proportions are a little bit off, things are a little bit squashed spatially and things like that. But um, uh, I'm just basically looking at different ways to use the colors and to paint and different, different, um, like just a lot of things that I'm sort of trying to work out through, through doing these studies. So I think they're very helpful. Um, yeah. Also, while we're talking about like the paper and the size of, um, you know, the paintings and different mediums and things, I really love your comments and I know that other people find them really helpful as well. So I really appreciate that. Um, if you ever have a you know, um, a suggestion, like a color suggestion or different ways to paint. Like I'm just showing you kind of my journey in one way, but I really love it when uh, we can talk about that in the comments. And um, like, for example, the comment the other week about using the 600 GSM paper and you wished you had have um, use that sooner. Really, I was thinking about that quite a lot and um, I remembered that I used to really enjoy the Saunders Waterford 425 GSM. So rather than like I've just been using the 300 GSM, but um, it's quite, it's harder to get. And um, yeah, so I, I think that's really helpful. And also like um, that you like to paint larger which is not always possible like on the videos um, as well like trying to get something larger in frame and also um, using a lot of paint for different you know things but yeah I, I really appreciate that and I know that other people do as well so you know please chime in if you have any ideas or um, different opinions and different ways to do things it's really helpful. Also, if you know of any other shops or things like that, because, you know, I am based in like in the US and I don't always have shops that are available to ship worldwide. So you may know of something that's closer to you that other people are also looking for. And then on the subject of comments as well, I just wanted to say how much I really love the thoughtful and beautiful comments that you leave. If I could write a book on, I keep getting, um, Anyway, if I could write a book on etiquette, uh, the art of etiquette, it would definitely include your comments. They're just really lovely and I know that a lot of other people also feel that way. They really enjoy being in the comments section and um, hearing the lovely things you have to say as well. So, so you can see just the gorgeous uh, granulation and the way that these colours will combine and... Um, create different effects in painting uh, which is what I'm looking for different um, different ways to convey the things through watercolor I really I, I like the medium of oils but um, and you see how tiny like but um, it's it's not always possible it's like a lot easier to, to do things in watercolor so I'm always looking for ways to kind of push that forward and then, um, yeah, this is also just a waiting room uh, thing that I sketched this week just with one pencil. This is the Derwent Life Fast in Bordeaux. So I do also recommend just having, you know, one pencil or one, um, 
one color that you really enjoy and using that as well so um, I'm not sure that I ever showed you the yellow souffle palettes how they came out so they they just came out really stunning and I hope that you've all gotten your orders and that you are enjoying them um, the little the, the the rich gold aqua bronze was the freebie so if you run out of that and you loved it that's what it was um, yeah I just did some little tiny uh, signature paintings there and um, let's see the next video may also be a little bit late so I try and do videos every second Saturday but this one's gonna be probably on a Thursday and then I'll try and do the next video in two weeks on a Wednesday so it might be like the big pastel haul and just a few different art supplies as well and then we've also got to swatch this palette so um, yeah I hope you guys are having a really uh, lovely week and I almost forgot so next the the next video will be hopefully on October 12th and I will hopefully have a class for you so um, it's going to be a special class and I've been working on it and organizing it for a year now so it's the most requested class I get which is on landscapes and for a long time I didn't want to um, do it because I feel like you know we've got Bob Ross for landscapes but um, and it's it, yeah I, I was just always surprised that I would get that um, request so I have almost finished the class hopefully it will be done by then if not I will let you know but it's going to be half price for 72 hours when I uh, release it so hopefully that makes it affordable for everyone and yeah I hope you guys enjoy it just more content and um, some beautiful outings that we go on and things like that so yeah um, okay I think that is everything have a really lovely week and I will uh, see you in the next video bye